Good morning, welcome to Redbird Arena on the campus of Illinois State University for today's Illinois High School Association Class 1A Championship match between Payson and Seymour High School.
United States Championship on IHSA TV is brought to you by Country Financial. You want to plan for your future, but what does that mean? When you have more questions than answers, it might seem easier to do nothing at all. So to solve the big challenges of tomorrow, take simple steps today at countryfinancial.com slash simple steps. And good morning. Welcome to Redbird Arena. Welcome to the 1A State Championship game along with former ISG standout Laura Gumbos. I'm Scott Slocum. Good to have you aboard. We have a championship featuring Payson Seymour at 40 and one versus 33 and six. Stu Strauss, Stewarts and Strasburg last year finished third. They will be winning Laura their ninth trophy this weekend. They are a small school power. Yeah, they sure are, and what an exciting way that both of these teams got here. The games yesterday were outstanding for 1A volleyball, and really looking forward to this yep. matchup today. Absolutely so. For Payson Seymour, this is their second trophy. Finished fourth back in 2009. So Payson Seymour, they are the Indians. They will be in the blue to your right, and the navy blue with green trim, Stu Strauss, they are on the left of your screen. Good crowd here today also. Yeah, lots of energy in yeah. Redbird Arena, seeing both sides full. And I was talking earlier, I guess you had to have the color blue to be in the 1A uh, state <laughs> championships uh, right. this weekend because all the teams had blue. They sure did. Well, we're ready to go. See who wins a state championship. Stu Strauss has won under their belt already. They won a Class A championship back in 1986. So it's been a long time. Longer than these players have been it's been alive absolutely <laughs> and we are underway Stu Strauss will serve first and that is Josie Stanford you're going to see a lot of her today she's headed to Arkansas State yeah she's a dynamic middle and she's really good at one recognizing if she's one on one and then the angles she's able to hit very powerful doesn't hurt that she's 6-1 Gives her a little more visibility. Yes, it does. So on paper, Payson Seymour is the favorite here. What does Stu Strauss have to do? Well, we talked about Josie Stanford and being in the middle and uh, what a dynamic middle she is. So I think you look at him, you're definitely going to uh, utilize her and, and try and defend her as well. And a red-hot start for the Indians. It's already 3 to nothing. There's a good look at the libero, Melina Tedro, the daughter of Teresa Luz Tedro, the head coach. That ball was tipped, and that'll be the first point for the Hatchets. Well, and for Stewart's and Stratsburg, they're definitely going to be looking at uh, their big hitter, number 11, Megan Schultke. Yeah, she is a good one. We have both coaches with daughters on the team, Schlechtes and Tedros. And we have a net violation going to be called against Stustras. That was Mackenzie Tabert. He had a nice play, but a man of carried here into the net. That'll be a point for the Indians. Casey Edson will be serving. Up 4-1. Once again, they go right inside to Stanford. Well, and one thing, when you're able to use a middle that much, which the, uh, Pace and Seymour has from the beginning of this game, shows how good their passing is. Yes. Because a lot of times uh, you can't utilize your middle if the passing isn't good. Two of the best setters you'll find anywhere. Mackenzie Tabbert, Stu Strauss, with 847 sets coming into this weekend's play. And Cassie Edson with 912 assists. And Stanford is on fire. And she's not just tapping that ball over. She's hitting it hard with some power, leaving no doubt for anybody to be able to dig that. And a blistering start for Pace and Seymour. And that'll quiet the crowd down a little bit. That's Mackenzie Reynolds, a sophomore. A nice hit there by Mackenzie Reynolds. Again, middles like to hit angles, and she's doing a good job utilizing there, going to the right back of the court. 
Here's Mackenzie Tabbert. And that'll be a point. And there you saw the power of Megan Schlechty. She really hammers the ball hard. She does. She's a fun player to watch. And, and you can just tell how much power when the libero, who is so good, unable to control it. Schlechty listed at 5'11", but she really can jump. Very athletic. Actually, you know, we talk about Megan Schlechty. You talk about a girl that plays softball. She's going to play college volleyball somewhere. She's an all-state basketball player also. I got to check out a Stu Strauss basketball game. I'm a big <laughs> basketball guy, and I got to see what she's got. That's right. Well, that's the nice thing about some of these small schools is these, these players do play other sports, and they're really well-rounded athletes yes. because of it. I wish some of the 4A girls would do that. I really do. Yep. Once, you know, when you get to the big schools and the big cities, you got the big clubs, and it's all volleyball, and I think that's not the best course of action. If you talk to any sports physiologist or anything like that, they love the fact that kids should or they want kids to play multiple sports, but they just don't do it. Well, it's better on your body. It's not yep. the wear and tear of the same muscles, redundant. That's and right. So forth. That ball was touched. That's going to be a point. That was a poor set that time from Tabbert, and her teammate bailed her out. We had a good look at that right down the net. Martina Gratz will serve a 5-4 sophomore. And that did not make it over the net. Those are the mistakes, Laura, that you can't have in a state championship game. Well, you're right, and service errors are going to happen, but when you're trying to notch little points back into the game, those service errors end up becoming one point, two points, three points, and we'll see how many points this one cost them. And that is out. So that's two points there from that missed error. That's what I was referring to. Did, right. that, did that service error cost you one point, or now we're looking at two points? Sent over by Tori Schieferdecker. That was Schmiedes Camp with the block. And then it's hit into the net. Well, there you go, Coach. Three points because of that error, or after that error. Well, and Pace and Seymour are so scrappy. They're just, yeah. you know, they're digging balls up, and then their block is having a really good presence along the net. And that's a kill for Schmiedes Camp. And Rhonda Schlecht, he's going to take a timeout. And they need one. They're down big, 12-5. Pace and Seymour is on top here early on in the 1A state championship. Hey, if you're in a hurry but want a fresh, affordable meal to serve your family or friends, Biagi's Prano Packs make it easy to enjoy an authentic Italian meal at home or on the go. Perfectly sized to serve four to five people and starting at only $30. Now, Prano Packs include your choice of pasta or two pizzas, house or Caesar salad, and freshly baked bread with Biagi's amazing butter for dipping. Or if you're planning a meal for a large group, just ask about their party pans. Those are sized for 8 to 12 people and ready for pickup with 24 hours advance notice. Biagi's has six locations in Illinois. Biagi's carryout is the perfect solution for your busy lifestyle. You can find them online at Biagi's.com That's B-I-A-G-G-I-S.com 12-5 the Indians for Pace and Seymour, Laura, they're extremely athletic at every position. They, they really are. And the other thing is just the um, energy that they bring to the court right now. It helps that they're winning 12-5, to 5, but they really are focused in right now where you're seeing uh, uh, Strasburg struggling a little. And lack of communication. We saw that on numerous occasions yesterday, and it almost cost two straws that game. 
It did, and they were able to work it out. So hopefully here in this next serve, you see a better lines of communication. That was going to be long, but Haddock received it anyway. And that will be long, and Stanford will watch it sail out of bounds and watch the scoreboard tally up another one for Payson Seymour. They're now up 14-5. to five. This is Schiefer Decker, 5'6", junior. That was Epperson with the block. And a big hit! How about that from Schmiedes Camp? Great powerful hit from the outside, going right down the line to right back defense. That was scary. <laughs> well, if you notice too, um, there's been a lot of free balls, and Payson Seymour has been able to capitalize on those free balls given to him. Roney had a lot on that one, and that'll be a kill for Caleroni. Roney's headed to University of Illinois to play softball. Does a nice job in volleyball as well. Here now is Taylor Renfro. 15-6, big lead here for Payson. Payson's hitting, you ready for this? 500 in the early going. They have had a lot of success with not too much challenge. Schlechte from the back. Longest point of the match so far. Good dig from Tedro. Schlechte. That ball is out. That was a demoralizing loss of a point for Stu Strauss. Yeah, when you're having great digs like that and able to get it to your setter and get some hits, it's, it's unfortunate. But I would say Pace and Seymour right now, their defense and the ability to keep the ball in play is really what's given them the lead. Epperson to serve. She also is a three-sport athlete, baseball, basketball, rather basketball, softball, and volleyball. Loses her serve. Epperson's one of those unsung heroes for... Pace and Seymour, probably the most athletic out there. Just moves well, jumps well. Well, they got Josie that time, and that was big number three, Maria Gentry on the inside. Yeah, great block. We talked about how much they want to go to Josie Stanford, so that is a great adjustment that we're seeing uh, Windstore, Stewart's, and Stratsburg. Trying to scratch their way back in it. Here's Anna Schlechty. Outstanding play from Tedro. And that is long. Another point for Stu Strauss. They're down by seven. Boy, it's amazing how good Wani Volleyball has become over the last handful of years. Yeah, it really is. And, and the other thing is, is that these players, as you watch just the game, how much it's really developed. That's another kill for Schmiedes Camp. That's her third. Well, you remember being down here 10, 15 years ago, or maybe not 15, but 10 years ago and seeing 1A, and it looked like small school volleyball, but this doesn't look anything like that at all. No, and when you, when you mentioned that, it was more of the basic volleyball, I would say. It was right. the high outside set, the high middle, the two ball, and now it's a, you know, a shoot set outside, and we got slides going and middles um, doing quicker sets as well. So, yeah, that's how the game has developed. Yeah. It's really become faster. Well, what I can't get over is how small these schools are. 201 students for Stu Strauss and about 160 for Pace and Seymour. I mean, these are just small schools that somehow, some way, are able to pluck all of these incredible athletes from a very small pool. Right. 
And I think, too, that's what makes 1A and 2A volleyball so fun to watch is yes. because they aren't getting to pick the kids around from a larger population. It's, it's what they're given and what they're able to produce by the end of the season is really remarkable. And a timeout will be taken by Coach Selecti as her team is having a difficult time with Payson Seymour. There you take a look at Teresa Luce Tedro. She graduated from Payson in 1988, but she's only been coaching now for a handful of years. She coached, well, she's coaching now, but she officiated for a long time. So she was a official and then got back into coaching in 2009 and has been the head coach now for a couple of years. Two years already with, are you ready for this? 70 wins in two years. Wow, that is that is really good. And this program, as talented as they are, they, they finished fourth back in 2009. We tried to get some records because, I mean, Stanford's putting up some crazy numbers. Tedro with the digs and, you know, Edson with the sets. But they don't have any school records. It's such a small school that really didn't focus on volleyball for right. all those years that there's no record. So they're basically starting from now moving forward. Yeah, and a lot of times with small schools, those aren't kept up. It's usually coach by coach. And so if yes. a coach, you have a lot of coaching changes and so forth, that's lost with the coach transitions. And Well, this would be a great way for them to start that new yes, record it book, would. wouldn't it? Yes, it would. It's just very sharp, very crisp here in the early going. And there's that slide that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, and the slide is so effective because it's hard to keep up with the middle. The middle can be really quick, and the set can be quick, and as if you're trying to catch up rather than stay in front of that middle, and that's why slides are so successful. 21-9, Payson Seymour. A great athletic play there for Gentry after a bad set. That'll be a point for Stu Strauss. And you know, talking about the history, Stu Strauss is small school volleyball royalty for the state championship. And their ninth trophy won this weekend. Nine trophies over the years. That's impressive. Yeah, and that also sets the tradition within that school, right? If you're going to be part of the volleyball program, it's expected that you're going to come yep. home with a trophy down the road. Janelle Hamer, Kathy Wenthe preceded Rhonda Schlechty. She's been there seven years, 182 victories. This is Cassie Edson, the junior setter. Edson so far with 10 assists here in this first game. Schlechte and a great dig by Tedro. That's what we talked about, the athleticism of Epperson. Well, and I think if you look at that play, too, Melina Tedro, that was a hard hit there by Slecky, and she just dug that straight up. And those are those things that get into the hitter's head, too, when you're already frustrated and down yep. and you're not able to kill the ball like you normally do. Well, Stu Strauss is in negative hitting numbers. Yeah, they're hitting, what, negative .033. So, obviously, as a coach, that's not where you want your team to hit, but that just shows how good the defense is for Payson Seymour. Here's Mackenzie Tabbert. Tabbert Conference MVP in softball. Calaroni with a nice block there. And then Stanford continues to clean up the middle. And the huge crowd from Pace and Seymour on their feet. This is set point. And fittingly, it's Josie Stanford. Division one player, Arkansas State is where she is going to be heading next year. There's one point fought off, and now we'll get to see Megan Schlechty serve. Nice swing there by Kayla Roney. Yeah, Going down for a the softball line. player, huh? Yeah, she's got that softball <laughs> uh, power behind yes, there. Yes, she does. And that arm swing. Great dig by Schleck to hit the scoreboard, but part of the court. And that is how this first game ends. 
Impressive performance from Pace and Seymour. 25-12 the score. They are one game away from the school's first ever volleyball state championship. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. First, it was the love of your life. Then, the promotion you deserved. The daughter you planned for. And the son you didn't. Now you're ready for a new home. So how do you properly protect all this? To solve the big challenges of tomorrow, start with simple steps today. If you're ready to start, we're ready to help. So let's get started at countryfinancial.com. The 1A state championship from Redbird Arena is brought to you by Biagi's, where carryout and curbside pickup make it easy to enjoy the great taste of Biagi's at home. Visit Biagi's online at Biagi's.com. That's B-I-A-G-G-I-S, Biagi's.com. Back here at Redbird Arena, Scott Slocum, Lord Dornbos, an impressive performance for Pace and Seymour. They appear to be on a mission. They do, and, you know, I was looking back at yesterday's notes, and, and if you remember when they were playing Newark, Pace and Seymour got off to a really slow start. In fact, for a long time, it looked like Newark was going to win that game. So I think they learned something from yesterday about how to start a game and start on top and um, just really just that dominance that they showed in that first, first set. That was impressive. They hit 345. Stustras is at 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Stanford with a total of 6 kills. Edson with 13 assists. 4 also for... Cameron Flesner. And nobody from actually Roney's got two kills and a couple of other girls have one each for Stu Strauss. So they've got to get the offense going. And it starts though with Megan Schlechty, and they got to get her going. Yeah, and they and the way they're gonna get her going is getting her in good positions to be successful, which is a good pass so that maybe the middle looks a little more um, enticing for them to try and stay loyal to as far as blocking, and so then they'll open up the outside for them. And they go right to her. She's in the back row. And Epperson hits it into the net. So a good start for Stu Strauss. They're up 1 0. Coach, for those who may not be familiar with liberos and, you know, how this all works, can you kind of explain the rules a little bit why they wear different jerseys? Sure. So your libero is what uh, in baseball they call a designated hitter. So in volleyball, it's your defense specialist. And so therefore they can play six rotations, but they can only be in the back row. Uh, they can be subbed for anybody you want. So you could have a, them switching with the left um, outside. They could be switching for a middle front row player, but they can serve. They can hit as long as it's below the plane of the net but they cannot go in the front row and make any play in the front row. Well, there you go. There's a lot there. Yeah. Why did, they, why did they change the rule a handful of years? It was early 2000s, I think, they went to it. Why did yeah. they change the rule? Um, well, I, I don't know behind the rule standpoint, but it does match with what the international community was doing with volleyball and the game of volleyball and also with the NCAA um, at all three levels there. So 
it is a it is a great tool it is a wonderful position and also not only is the libero a lot of people think setters are more of like your quarterback and controlling the tempo your liberos have to know so much about the game and reading and they control that back row and they're telling the players next to them where to go on defense so uh, i would say you have pretty much have two quarterbacks you got your setter and you got your libero but it helps to have a middle like that too yes it does <laughs> chelsea stanford again And it's interesting, usually the liberos are coaches' daughters. The setters or coaches or setters or liberos are coaches' daughters. Yeah, it is funny how it works out that, but I think it's more of that volleyball IQ. Yeah. It really sets in in those positions because you have to have that. Well, there's Schlechty. They finally find her outside, and she delivered. So if you're Stu Strauss, just forget about the first game and try to get this one. Yeah, you have to. You know, it wasn't the best performance coming out for a championship game, but what can you learn from it? Just keep going. And it would be really impressive if, pa if Pace and Seymour could keep that same momentum right. because I think it's really hard in a game like this with against good team. Uh, and they lost that momentum. And they've lost a little bit of focus, too. And that's easy when you dominate the way they did. I mean, a state championship, it was 25-12. Right. That's domination. <laughs> that is. And carrying that forward when a team, obviously, uh, Stu Strasburg didn't come out the way they wanted to. And they're refocused. And there's a, a poor set, a bad pass, a poor set. And Stu Strauss is up by three. And it won't be too much longer before Coach Tedro calls a timeout, if this continues. The sets are just up. They got a break there, but actually, no, they didn't. She was in the net. That was Cameron Flesner. The, the set carried her outside the pin, and she tried to get it back in play, not able to do it. And that is really hard for an outside right-handed outside because your feet have to be behind you, and at a strong angle like that, they're just really hard to keep in play. The hatchets are on a roll. That ball is out. And here comes the timeout, and a good one. And maybe it's just that side of the court, Scott. <laughs> Apparently, everything goes well if you're on the, uh, let's see, the north end of the court. Stu Strauss, led by Megan Schlechty. They joined in with Windsor. Stewartson, Strasburg, and Windsor started the co-op in 2015. Well, they've had a lot of injuries this year. Cole has got her playing softball. She's out. Calaroni, you see her big knee brace right there. Number 14 on the right side. She had an ACL issue. Claire Muno had a shoulder issue. Megan Schlecht, stress fracture in her foot. So they've been battling injuries. So for them to make it back here to Redbird Arena and this year to the state championship and last year finishing third is pretty remarkable considering the fact that they've been dinged up all year. It, it, you're right. And the other thing is, uh, I was noticing Slucky, she's still in a boot. She still has that stress factor. So when she's not on the volleyball court, she's still in a boot. You can't tell the way she plays. But also, when you have those injuries, the, the stir in the lineup, too, you're getting new players in. And that does, there is dynamic about the players consistently getting used to playing with each other. Well, everything going wrong for Pace and Seymour now. They look like a different team than we saw 20 minutes ago. They really do. You know, we saw them on the other side. They had consistent passing. They were able to get uh, Josie Stanford involved, and they haven't been able to do that at all. Well, they got a break there with a the service error. And they needed that in the worst way. Here's Stanford serving. Josie with eight kills so far, hitting 429 in this match. That was a rocket of a serve. Well, bounced off the face of Haddock. And we had a Pace and Seymour girl in the net again, and again, it was Cameron Flesner. Well, sets are a little long. 
Yeah, they're a little long and a little tight, so it's, it's becoming some issues for the outsides. But as we saw Josie uh, Stanford serving, this Pace and Seymour team averages nine aces a match. Wow. wow which is unbelievable. So the fact that uh, stratton Suesberg has been able to control that has been good. Roney is blocked one-on-one -on -one by Epperson. Now we'll get a good look here at Cameron Flesner. She had three other sisters go through this program at Payson Seymour. I think she's the last Flesner. They're perfectly placed down the line. Hold on. What'd they say? That was out? Well, as you can tell, the fans from Stustras don't like that call. Did he call it outside of the pin? No, it looked like or they she. just called it outside the line. A break, possibly, and then an ace. There's one of those aces you were talking about. Yes, and an ace after that play, which just demoralized after thinking they got a kill and a point. This is where teams need to, we'll see how they react to everything. Selecty goes wide. So it was 10-4, four consecutive points by Payson Seymour, and they're right back in the second game, leading one game to nothing. And the run continues. Every sport, momentum means so much, but there's something about this one, Laura, that is unlike any other. Yeah, yesterday I was sitting and watching the game, and a, a young man came up, and he goes, have you ever seen, it was one of the matches we were watching, have you ever seen just so, the momentum can just change like that? And it's like, that's what makes this sport <laughs> so fun. Martina Gratz will serve. Well, there's a good hit, good strong hit from Schmidis camp. It's her fourth kill of the match. Pace and Seymour all of a sudden is within one. And moments ago they were down by six and they were reeling. Well, their serve is definitely their strong suit that's keeping them in this and being able to itch the right back. Slechty from the back. Wasn't trying to kill it from back there, but had enough pace on it. It was tipped by the blocker, but still ended up inbounds anyway. Renfro will serve now, the senior defensive specialist. Quite a swing, huh? That was a great swing right down the line. The line is so hard to defend unless the libero or another... Defensive player is right there waiting for her. In that case, she took every inch of that line. <laughs> Got the ball down on there. This group of girls from Payson Seymour in 7th and 8th grade. They finished 3rd in the IESA tournament. Gonna do, at this point, well, we're going to do better for sure here as seniors in high school. Blocked by Stanford. Last year they lost to West Prairie in the regional championship. We all know what West Prairie went on to do. Stanford again. Just too big, too powerful in the middle. Yeah, for Windsor, Stewart, and Strasburg to be able to stop Josie Stanford, they're definitely going to have to double block or try and do something to keep her out of being able to get that. That's a good look angle. at Pace and Seymour. Let's talk a little bit about the assistant coach you see right there. The white shirt. That is Courtney Thomas Cavittle. When she played high school volleyball at Kalb, she was an All-Stater. She then went on to UW Madison, played for the Badgers. She was an All-American, Big Ten title, and played on a national runner-up team. So they have someone there, Coach Tedro does, that she can lean on that's been in the trenches and has been dominant at the highest college level. 
and how awesome for a smaller school like this to have someone with such experience and knowledge of the game and and uh, I, I just think it's awesome. Hey, you don't find that very often. That's usually on a college bench somewhere, right? College bench or maybe some of your bigger schools, 4A schools, where they came from. But uh, I believe she's married to someone from around that area or ended up going back there, starting their practice over there. So that's how she ended up in that small, small town. Yep. DeKalb to Madison to the national championship game to Payson Seymour. <laughs> Great effort by Schlechty and all the hatches. Look at the bodies all over the floor. Strasburg, Stu Strauss here. They're scratching and clawing for their lives. They're down one game to nothing. And now they're trailing here in the second game as Payson Seymour has come all the way back from a six-point deficit and taken the lead. But there's a service error. Well, that service error should help some, but also just see him, we're trying to see him just get into a routine right now. It, it seems as if they're just trying to defend what's coming at him rather than them setting the tone for the game. Yeah, they're more in a reactionary mode. Yep. Stanford perfectly placed, and they did exactly what you said Stu Strauss should do. They sent two blockers at her. Yep, and you know, she's a good middle, so she saw that, and she tipped where the opening was and that's the that's the gamble you take when you're trying to defend someone but it did prevent one of those powerful kills that kind of get into the head more of a player rather than just a tip great effort but a point for Stu Strauss Schieferdecker rolling all over arms flying trying to keep the ball off the ground Michaela Haddock I'll be serving now for Stu Strauss. Now well, she took a little bit off that one. The dig was in place. You had Renfro back there. She was ready, but just like a baseball changeup, coach, she pulled the string on it. Yeah, and those happen. I'm not sure they're always done on purpose. <laughs> you can do them on purpose, but that was more of just a miss hit, I think. Oh, and that serve just took a dive down as soon as it crossed the net. Skadzi Edson in the setter. 17-14. Payson Seymour looking to finish this in two. Net violation. Another one. That's the third this game alone for the Indians. Well, and those net violations, they happen a lot of times because the player's just trying to be aggressive with their block and they're, you know, they're pressing over the net and sometimes they're more closer than they realize and get tangled up in there. Good cover on the line by Schlechty. But still a point for the Indians. And they go up three, 18 to 15. Stamper with 12 kills. She's hitting a crazy 556. Nice touch by Roney. And good eye by Roni there, seeing that you had two blockers coming up against her. And she, I think she saw that spot open earlier. It ended up resulting in an error. She accidentally mishandled that, but good eyesight from her. <laughs> and a kill for Roni. Roni having success there from the left side, and then she's taking advantage of it on the right side. And those are those little points that, you know, they can keep eating at and get them ahead in the game. She had four kills. And a block from the middle, Mackenzie Reynolds, the sophomore. 
And Stu Strauss has scratched its way back to even now. 18-18. Apperson will swing. Stanford for the back. She wasn't ready for that one. No, she wasn't, and, and that happens, but uh, they're just trying to be aggressive. They're going to their go-to hitter, and, you know, she had the hitting error, but. Selecting from the back. And it looks like Pace and Seymour is playing a little tight here in the second game. They are. It's been a little more shifted as far as the controlling of the game. And they're up one game to nothing. You'd think they'd be brimming with confidence, but uh, they're getting a little tight. They don't want to go to that third set. The 1A State Championship is brought to you by Country Financial. You want to plan for your future, right? But what does that mean? When you have more questions than answers, it might seem easier to do nothing at all. So, to solve the big challenges of tomorrow, to take simple steps today at countryfinancial.com slash simple steps. That's countryfinancial.com slash simple steps. 20-18, Stu Strauss loses the first set 25-12, and they're up here late in the second. Take a quick look at the officials. You see all four of them standing at attention. Andy Glauber is up on the stand. Tammy Dotson's a referee over in front of the scorer's table. An East Peoria, Illinois native. Got to give a shout-out to the Raiders. Dory Reich and Christina Thomas are your line judges. I just happen to be an East Peoria Raider. That's why I got to give a shout-out. <laughs> and that's the only reason I knew it. I said, that's really impressive, Scott. <laughs> Couldn't tell you where, for, where Reich or Thomas are from, though. But I'll find out. <laughs> Oh, unbelievable dig in the back. That was Tabbert. Oh, we have that three-point def uh, deficit there where you're looking at... Uh, all right, let me rephrase this. Point 20 in the volleyball game is very significant, and the first person usually to break that 20 has the, holds the momentum, right? Yep. So now that... Windsor uh, Stratsburg has been able to get in here. Coach, that was a six-point run. It was 18-15 to 15 pace in Seymour, 21-18 in favor of Stu Strauss. And then Schlechte hits it out. What a run. Great run. You don't see six-point runs very often. Not in a championship game when two teams are so evenly matched. And that's a kill. And that's Schmidus camp. Well, she just kind of lulls you to sleep. Everybody's looking for Stanford or Epperson or <laughs> Flesner, and then all of a sudden, Schmidus camp hops up and throws one down. Oh, she's had a great game thus far. Yeah, five kills, hitting 500. 21 20. Nice set, and that ball was long, but it was touched or not. Landjaz says it was touched, and we're tied at 21. Well, and you look at both of these teams with the record, uh, Pace and Seymour, 40 and one. Uh, Windstor, uh, Stu Stratsburg, 33 and six. You have to say that probably the experience is gonna lead to Pace and Seymour being able to handle these situations like this. Tried a quick set to Roney. She hit it into the net. The timing was off there and a timeout taken by Rhonda Schlechte. As her team had a lead and that lead is gone and Seymour now, Payson Seymour, three points away from the state championship. In the blink of an eye, things have just turned 180. Yes, they have. And both teams talking about, you know, there's only three more points for Seymour. There's only four more points. And how do you control that? It's, you know, a quick game to four, a quick game to three. And, and really focusing in on where each player is. You know, when they get back out here, 
is Stanford in the back front row, back row. You know, Windstorf is going to need to know that. And same with Windstor, looking at where uh, Skelke is. Payson Seymour, 40 and 1. Again, they've only won one trophy in school history. Rita Speckar brought it down here in 2009 in 1A, and they brought home the fourth place. So they're three points away from going home with the big one. Karen Flesner, the senior, playing at her final high school game, will serve. Wonderfully placed. <laughs> that stems the tide for the moment. 22 22. Well, this is what a championship game should look like, right? We want them to be this close and exciting at the end. And who's going to come up for these teams? That is out by a foot. That ball was hit so hard by Schmiedeskamp. It bounced off the block. It came all the way cross court. It traveled a long ways. Kind of left the audience in suspense trying to figure out is that going to be in, out, it's floating. Good block from Epperson. Nice work by Tedro. Mason Seymour is a point away from the championship. And Schiefer Decker, Schiefer Decker, the junior, will serve for the title. That ball was tipped. That'll be a point for Stu Strauss. Half of the team from Payson was celebrating. The other half realized it was tipped. <laughs> well, the ones blocking it knew it was tipped. So they were just hoping it wasn't called, right? So they avoid one match point. Can they make it two? Great set. Yes, they can. <laughs> the only thing that would make this more exciting if it was the third game. <laughs> That is a good point. We are just at two. Lack of communication. Sweetie's camp should have taken that ball if she didn't. Well, I think you look here if you're pacing Seymour, you have your big time hitter, Josie Stanford, in the back row. They get a good pass here. I, I anticipate they're going to try and find a way to get the ball to her. Renfro will serve for game two. A chance here for the Hatchets. Great cover. That ball is in. I had to wait. We all waited for the flag, and it came. <laughs> well, those were some big swings there for Hiley. You have to help me out. Schmiedens camp. Schmiedens camp. I'll, I'll get it by the That's end That's a mouthful. <laughs> There's two of them, Haley and Hadley. That's Haley, or Hiley, I should say. Those were big swings, and she went up there confident. Now they got the rotation they wanted with Stanford back in the middle. They did, yep. This is the third match point for Payson Seymour. First two denied. Epperson to serve for the championship.
Well, it took him overtime. But the Indians from Pace and Seymour have won their first ever state title. Well, really well played game by Pace and Seymour. You know, they started the first mat, the first set off just so dominant. That second one, they slowed up, started off slow, but they really inched their way back into it and made it exciting ending. And when you have a six foot one inch Division I middle like Josie Stanford, that hits 455. Schmidt's camp hit 571. And those two were unstoppable. Between them, they had 22 kills. Yeah, great offensive, but also the digs today, that they had over 30 digs in that two-set series for the championship. But we need to give props to Rhonda Schlecki, the head coach of Stustras. This is two years in a row they've been here. Finished third last year, second this year, and you go back to 2013, and they finished second that year, so she's got it going on at Stustras. She's got her daughter back next year, Schlecki. She'll be back. The other players are back as well. So my guess is Stustras will probably be back also. And you bring up a really good point just from the fact it's taken Peyton, Payson Seymour since 1986 to get a trophy. And you have had Windsor, Stewart's, and Strasburg here um, and with nine trophies. Yeah. So it is unbelievable and kudos to them. Great job today. 25-12, 27-25. Stu Strauss ends the year with a record of 33-7. and 41 wins for Payson, and that 41st came today in a 25-12, 27-25 win over the Hatchets from Stu Strauss. For Lauren Dormos, I'm Scott Slocum from Redbird Arena reminding you, today's 1A State title game brought to you by Country Financial. You want to plan for your future, but what does that mean when you have more questions than answers? It might seem easier to do nothing at all. So to solve the big challenges of tomorrow, take simple steps today at countryfinancial.com slash simple steps. That's countryfinancial.com slash simple steps. Congratulations to the Lady Indians from Payson Seymour, your 1A girls volleyball state champs. Once again, we'll be having a word ceremony in just a moment. Again, fans, thank you for remaining in your seats. And we'll get to the uh, award ceremony all four places in just a moment.
the awards for the 2017 Girls of the Ball State Final. What a way to start the day. Some exciting knowledge. More to happen uh, at, in the day. Presenting the medallions will be members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors attending today's match. And those with us right now are V. Ken Jones of Breeze Central, representing Division 7. And uh, Katie Hasso of Taylor Ridge, Rockridge, who is in that large room. this time, we're ready to go. Let's meet the Lady Norseman. Sophomore, number six, Abby Erickson. 
Defendants from Mason Seymour, please step forward. We have something to award to you. Are you ready? It is called the State Championship lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. First, it was the love of your life. Then, the promotion you deserved. The daughter you planned for. And the son you didn't. Now, you're ready for a new home. So how do you properly protect all this? To solve the big challenges of tomorrow, start with simple steps today. If you're ready to start, we're ready to help. So let's get started at countryfinancial.com.